Good morning, dear friends. One of the questions that we hear most often is how do I clean my natural stone floor? So we're going to show you how. I'm Frank Cunningham, the president of Durango Stone. I'm just going to give you some simple instructions. Okay, let's become familiar with it. When you buy a natural stone floor, you're going to want to get a mop bucket with a ringer, as you see here. Of course, some of the other things you're going to need is pH balanced soap. So amazingly, regular old dish soap is pH balanced. However, if you buy stone soap, there are water expanders in there that reduce spotting if you wish to go to that step. It doesn't take a lot of soap, just a little squirt to get started. You don't want a lot of soap because soap causes uh, spots. So then you, it's a simple process. You, you just lightly wring your mop and you wet mop your floor. Step number one is to wet mop your floor. So we're just going to use this section of our showroom to allow you to see how simple it is. You wet mop. Now normally in a home, your floor will not be so soiled that you need scrubbers. However, in a commercial project like what we have here, or in a home that gets a lot of traffic with kids and things, you may also take the step of a brush. The brushes just allow you to emulsify the dirt that is sitting on top of the stone to deep clean the stone. Now this may be done with a stand-up brush or a handheld brush or both. So we'll just simply move on here and show you. You could dry mop. Well, let's just do that. We will dry mop first and then we will dry the floor. So to dry mop, you bring it out all the way and then you mop it again. This time you're picking up dirt. Look at the dirt coming off my shoes, my goodness. Well, here we go. So now we've dry mopped. The next step is to take your terry cloth towels. You can get these at any uh, big box store and you dry your floor. Sandpaper comes next. Sandpaper is used when we have a really tough spot. We don't have any of those on this floor, but I'm going to show you how easy it is to do. So here we have an easily cleaned floor. Yeah. Depends upon how you live in your home, on how many times in a year it'll have to be mopped like this. Of course, uh, using the wide type brooms on a stone floor is the fastest and easiest way to uh, sweep up the dust that accumulates so rapidly. Here in Arizona, we have tremendous dust. Okay, then, if there is in fact an extra soiled place, this is sandpaper. It's wet or dry sandpaper. It's 220 grit. Now sandpaper may be used to get a really bad spot. We do have one, so I'm going to show you. All right, here we have a very soiled area. It's the entrance to our warehouse. So we have forklift tire dust, the most nasty kind of dust there is. So what do you do about that? Maybe you have a pet or Worse, a boy in the house who, who makes a mess. How you get it up? Well, you begin by doing exactly what we did earlier. We scrub the floor using a brush because you want to get down into the pores that hold the dirt. And so, you always use circular motions when you're cleaning the stone because that maintains the finish instead of degrading the finish. When you have these little spots, these are really ground in spots. So here we can see that some of it has come up, but some of it remains.
So, when you have these extra difficult areas, you can take the sandpaper we discussed. It is a wet or dry sandpaper, either black or red or fine. You want 220 grit. You put some water directly on the area to be cleaned. You take the sandpaper between your fingers and in circular motion, you break loose the very round and fine dirt that is fighting you. Now occasionally, like right here, I have discovered there is a hole, a subterranean void that has appeared here. Many, many marbles and travertines have subterranean, well, all travertines have subterranean voids. That is holes that are hiding just under the surface. Now, we have shown you on our website uh, how to fill and how to fix subterranean voids, but I am going to give you a short demonstration in this presentation as well. So you just work on these areas. until they're cleaned up. You'll notice that as the soap and water sit on the surface for a little while, it begins to emulsify the dirt better. So sometimes just stepping back and letting it sit for a while is a good thing to do. It's like a while, like maybe five minutes. Not very long. Okay, so it's so dirty, I'm going to clean the dirt off again. And you see the floor is coming clean. All that's remaining are the subterranean voids, which I'm going to show you that next. Okay, so now we are going to do a bit of subterranean void repair here in this high traffic area. Uh, the tools we will need are color matching unsanded grout. This happens to be bonded grout. A piece of styrofoam, but also cardboard works just fine. I'm just taking a plastic knife and I'm cutting a small square here. And we'll see what this is for in a moment. Of course, we always have our terry cloth towels. Now, to repair a subterranean void easily, now many of you may use a professional cleaner. When you use a professional cleaner, of course, they automatically do this for you as part of the cleaning job. We are going to show you a series of what does professional cleaning look like presented by Beyond Stone Solutions. For now, however, what we're going to do is we're going to examine what does a repair look like. So to that end, we're going to repair these right here. Okay, now the trick to making subterranean voids easy to repair is to have water in the hole, but not around the hole. Oh, an eyedropper works great, but interestingly enough, the tip of your finger, just putting a drop in the hole, is also effective. We'll go ahead while we're at it and fix these as well, these little pin dot holes right here. Now, I like to use a piece of Kleenex because it's just so easy. You want to get the water off the surface, but not drying inside the hole. And then we simply take a little bit of grout on the edge of a tool. In this case, I'm using a screwdriver to get just a little bit of grout. Not a lot. A lot just creates more cleanup, so it increases the time required. So we just put a little grout in there, and then piece of cardboard or a piece of styrofoam, you come straight down on it, and in circular motions, you, until the grout has gone into the hole, and the cleanup is surrounding the hole. At this stage, you simply take your terry cloth towel, 
and meticulously clean everywhere except directly on the hole. Now you'll see that it's a little discolored there. That's because it's wet. When it dries, however, it will be invisible. And we're going to come back in a few minutes so you can see that. Okay, so with sealers, we know that there are very low grade sealers on the market. That's most of them. You want a high quality sealer, be sure you buy a high quality sealer. Many, many retail stores, not so much stone companies, but other types of retailers, often sell watered down products, seemingly a great price, but actually a horrible value in that the sealer is barely more than water or solvent and very little sealer in it. So don't be fooled by a low price, buy a top quality sealer. And we also have to have rubber gloves because sealer is a kind of technology today that will pass right through into your skin, right into your bloodstream. Under no circumstances you want sealer touching your skin and of course a towel to dry things at the end. So this whole process is really quite simple. We're gonna begin by pouring an amount onto the floor. Then, taking the glove and a towel, we'll just fold it to make it comfortable to use. And we want to wet the floor, thoroughly wet the floor, and have the sealer soak in to the stone giving it a beautiful protection. So as you can see, even in a horribly soiled area, entrance to a warehouse, you can return it back to a reasonable beauty. I say again, in your home, you would never have such abuse on your floor. In a commercial building, however, you could, in which case, professional cleaning is always advised uh, in heavy soil areas. Our next series will be presented by Beyond Stone Solutions, a company that we have a lot of trust in, which is why we're bringing them to you. Of course, you may be in any state or any country observing this video. Uh, always ask for references when hiring a professional to do anything for you. And of course, check those references.